I bet Big Anthony would have had an easier time if he had had some of the sauces that you aren't going to get a chance to enjoy uh, since we have our sauciest chef competition. And that's why I'm wearing the apron right now, because our sauciest chef, the boss of the sauce, is going to win a Stay Saucy apron. So, so when you get your ticket for the spaghetti supper, uh, put it in the, uh, the tomato that's in front of the chef um, of the sauce that you choose. And we'll count it up at the end. So, hi, I'm Eric Landstrom. Um, I'm the vice chair of the Pagan Study Group here. And today's service is about the Feast of First Fruits. Uh, the Pagan Study Group invites you to celebrate Lamas, which is traditionally held on the 1st of August, about halfway between the summer solstice and the autumn equinox. Although in recent centuries, we've started moving that celebration to Sundays, <laughs> nearest the date for obvious reasons. Um, but still, Lamas is a festival of the ritual calendar that marks the blessing of the first fruits of autumn. Actually, before we begin, I want to briefly jump to the end just to clarify something with all y'all. Uh, if you look at your order of service, you'll notice that at the conclusion of the homily that there is a call and response song, which is forget your favorite offering, uh, inspired by Bob Dylan. Uh, the subject of today's service is the Feast of First Fruits, but I want to be very clear from the start that I am not suggesting that the overarching message at the end could be summarized by saying, eh, good enough, he told us to forget our perfect offering. Uh, or I, I don't want you going home somehow and thinking, you know, your best isn't good enough. Bleh. That is not what I meant. Unless you understand good enough to be like the farmer who shared his seed corn. Are you familiar with that story? I'm not seeing people nod yes. Okay, um, so the story is that there's this farmer who grows excellent quality corn. Every year the farmer wins the best grown corn competition in class 159 champion corn at the Minnesota State Fair. Next slide. One year a reporter interviews the farmer and asks his secret. The farmer, uh, the reporter discovers that the farmer, next slide, the farmer, um, a reporter discovers that the farmer is sharing his award-winning corn with his neighbors. And the reporter is absolutely dumbfounded. How can you afford to be sharing your seed corn? Your neighbors will enter the competition against yours. And the farmer says, oh, don't you know? The wind picks up pollen from ripening corn and it swirls it from field to field. So if my neighbors are growing inferior corn, then my corn's quality steadily degrades because of cross-pollination. If you wanna grow the best corn, I have to help my neighbors to grow good enough corn. It's a good story, right? Uh, it teaches about the virtues of cooperation and community rather than competition. But today is not about competition and contest. Today is about offering your first fruits. In the religions of the ancient Western world, like Europe and the Levant, uh, the first fruits were sacred. They were a spiritual sacrifice and to be given to the priests as an offering to the deity. Next slide. For the ancient Greeks, the first Minnesota State Fair corn. Thanks. Um, for the ancient Greeks, first fruits took the form of a parte, uh, which was given to the high priestess of Demeter and Persephone, the mother and daughter goddesses of grains and vegetation. Still to this day, 3,000 years later, we retell the myth of sacred mystery with the abduction of Persephone from her mother Demeter by the king of the underworld, Hades town. The cycle has its three phases, the descent, the long winter of Demeter's search when crops failed and famine spread, and the ascent of Persephone and the reunion with her mother. Persephone's rebirth is a symbolic rebirth of all plant life and the symbol of the eternity of life that flows from generations that spring from each other. And the first fruit closes the cycle 
with a harvest in honor of the two goddesses with ancestral custom. Next slide. In ancient Judaism, Bikurim was a type of sacrificial offering. With the ripening of the summer grains, the first grown fruits of labor were brought to the temple and laid by the altar, and a special, and a special declaration was recited. The commandment to bring first fruits to the temple appears in the Torah in Deuteronomy 26, verses 1 through 11, and in Exodus 23, starting at verse 16. Celebrate Shavuot, the harvest, the festival of harvest, with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. Celebrate Sukkot, the festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather your crops from the field. Three times a year, all the men are to appear before the sovereign Lord. Bring the best of your first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. The Bikirim is a sacrificial offering of the Shavuot, the first fruits of the wheat harvest in Israel. In addition, rabbinical tradition teaches that the date Shavuot was regarded as an appropriate time to make and to renew covenants between heaven and humanity. The association between Shavuot and oaths suggests the connection of the giving of the Torah, which is in itself a covenant between the God of Abraham and the tribes of Israel. According to the Book of Jubilees, it was on Shavuot after the flood that Elohim made a covenant with Noah and all his descendants and with every living creature with them, birds, livestock, and all wildlife of the earth that came out of the ark. According to the tradition of Orthodox Judaism, Shaviot also marks the revelation of the Ten Commandments to Moses and the Israelites. Next slide. Let's move from the Mediterranean Sea to the North Sea, from Mount Sinai to the moors of Scotland and Ireland. The pagan Celts there celebrated Lunasad. The Book of Invasions says Lunasad was established as a harvest festival and funeral games in the last weeks of July by the great hero Lu of the Long Hand, in memory of his foster mother, Taluta. The Taluyan Games were similar to the modern Olympics, with contests including sword fighting, archery, wrestling, boxing, swimming, the long jump, and the high jump, running, spear throwing, and horse racing. The Taluyan Games culminated with the celebration of Lunasad, and this is why. Lu had led the Tutha de Danan, the folk of the goddess Danu, in battle against their former king, Bress, and the monstrous Fomorians. Prior to the battle, Lu asked each man and woman in his army what art he had or she had that they would bring to the fray. And then Lu addressed his army in speech which elevated each warrior's spirit to that of a king. After the victory, Lu found Bress alone and unprotected on the battlefield, and Bress begged for his life. Lu spared him because the former king promised to teach the Tutha de Danan how and when to plow, to, to plow, to sow, and to reap. Lu lost his mother, Tolua, after the battle when she died of exhaustion after clearing the plains of Ireland for agriculture. Next slide. In the Anglo-Saxon England, Lamas was the name of the first day of August. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle describes the Feast of First Fruits Lamas, or Loaf Mass, as the day when loaves were baked with the first of the wheat harvest to be blessed at a Christian church. The loaves then might have been used in protective rituals. A book of Anglo-Saxon charms directs that a Lamas loaf be broken into four parts to be placed at the four corners of a barn in order to protect the grain. And so we come to the question my fellow UU pagan, Julie Ryan, asked of how to celebrate first fruits today in the modern age, since many of us in the congregation don't grow our own food. Lunasad is about celebrating the hard work of the harvest and presenting it with pride to a higher power. I credit Julie's suggestion that we keep the theme going by celebrating and thanking ourselves for the hard work we put into our lives every day. We are Unitarian Universalists, and service is our prayer. First Fruits is not about abundance or scarcity. They're about making a voluntary sacrifice to make the world and the goddess fertile again. As Maria Montessori said about a fertile imagination, the secret of good teaching is to regard the child's imagination, sorry, intelligence as a fertile field in which the seeds may be sown to grow under the heat of a flaming imagination. 
and what seeds may be sown? My friends, do you want to know a secret? If you want to grow the best corn, then you have to help your neighbor grow good corn. You are the fertile field which the winds carry and co-mingle the pollen of someone else's words and actions. And in turn, you are also the corn farmer and a good teacher of our Unitarian Universalist Fellowship Covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, to the end that all shall grow into harmony. And today, during the fire feast of Lunasad, you are also the heat of a flaming imagination. Imagination does not become great until human beings, given the courage and the strength, use it to create, to quote Maria Montessori again. Lou of the long hand knew this. In addition to the athletic sports during the Telean games, he also included challenges in singing, dancing, strategy and storytelling. Along with craft competition for goldsmiths and jewelers and weavers and armorers, Lou was the chief Olam of Ireland because he was a warrior poet, a champion and a master craftsman, a hero and a historian and a harp player. In our fellowship, we have gratitude for the diverse roles we fulfill in our everyday lives. Beyond our professional identities, we recognize and honor the multifaceted roles that define us, whether as parents, partners, or problem solvers. Each of these roles is testament to our commitment of service, where our daily actions become a form of prayer, enriching both our own lives and the lives of those around us. Just as we cherish and celebrate the contributions of every individual, we understand that our occupations do not solely define us, but rather complement the myriad ways we contribute to our communities and the world at large. Consider this woman. She's someone's daughter. Maybe she's also someone's sister, someone's aunt. Maybe she's someone's mother and someone's spouse. Maybe she's single. Maybe she likes solitude. Maybe she's a good friend. Maybe she's an excellent coworker. We are all something regardless of our occupation. I am what I feel and what I don't feel. I am the tears that come out of my eyes. I am all the experiences I've lived. I am laughter. I am the disappointment I felt when I didn't pass some auditions. I am everything and I am nothing at the same time. I am my friends. I am my insecurities. I am the notes I wrote to the tooth fairy that she answered with all her love. I am every single time I break down and I'm every single time I hold on. I am the light and darkness. I am the excitement I feel when friends are coming home. I am the conversations I had. I am the wind in the face when riding a horse. I'm the smell of leather when entering the stables. I'm every time I stop believing in myself. I am when I prioritize myself. I am when I feel I am not enough. I am when I am enough. I am sunsets in the pool. I am eternal showers. I am haircuts. I am blue. I am all the colors. I am freedom. I am a grateful student. I am a proud teacher. I am afraid to start over. I am wanting to start over. This is me. I'm definitely not what I studied, my job or my beliefs, but my experiences, both the ones I've already had and those that are ahead of me. That's a poem, Who I Am, that was written by Marina Machado, our music director. It was published in the January newsletter of the U Unicorn. And music brings me back to the call and response of forget your favorite, forget your perfect offering. You may feel that when you make an offering of first fruits to whatever role you hold nearest and dearest to your soul, that it needs to be a perfect offering. This is a mistake. This is a bad application of economic principle of comparative advantage. And it is an even worse flaw in worrying about what is not good enough. 
Don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Forget your perfect offering. I'll say that again. Forget your perfect offering. You say it. Repeat after me. Forget your perfect offering. Forget your perfect offering. Just ring the bell that you can ring. There is a crack in everything. in forget your perfect offering forget your perfect offering ring the bells that you can ring ring the bells that you can ring there is a crack in everything there is a crack in everything that's how the light gets in that's how the light gets in that's how the light Gets in, that's how the light gets in, that's how the light gets in.